Um, welcome to the Ghana community meeting after the summer break. We will be talking about the Hetzner Cloud extension that we were working on for the last few months. And uh, my name is Lothar Gesslein, and I will be joined by my colleague Tobias Wolf, and we will present it together for a short introduction of ourselves, not focused on us specifically, but our company that we are working for. Um, it's called 23 Technologies. And we are a small startup. We are working in the cloud native world. And you know, we wanted to focus on the cloud native stuff. Um, cloud native mostly nowadays means Kubernetes. And well, one of the great things about Kubernetes is to run other Kubernetes clusters um, like Gardner does it. And uh, I am, I'm not sure how deep we, uh, we are with Kubernetes on top of Kubernetes on top of Kubernetes, but at least uh, three layers is what I'm presenting today. So um, um, the gardener that I will show you soon is running on top of another gardener, which is running on top of an, another gardener, which is running on another Kubernetes cluster, of course. So I think that's uh, great fun to do stuff like this. And um, right now we are kind of exploring the I would call it the different layers of, uh, you know, stuff to do with Kubernetes and managed Kubernetes or providing Kubernetes itself is just the first layer that we are interested in. Um, but we wanted to build on a solid foundation um, and not be, you know, we are really in the open source uh, mindset, not be bound to any hyperscaler or any proprietary or, you know, half proprietary solution. So we, I think Gardner is a really great project in that space and um, yeah, works great. Um, customers uh, currently, since we are currently mostly on the Kubernetes as a service layer are of course um, people that are interested in um, having their own managed Kubernetes or uh, we are also partnering with cloud providers that you know may, on OpenStack or other cloud technologies are running their own um, public cloud, but are missing a solid managed Kubernetes um, as a service as offering. And we are working with them to do that with Gardner. We are also involved in the Gaia-X uh, project or world uh, um, as part of the Sovereign Cloud Stack project. Um, don't worry if you don't know about that, but Sovereign Cloud Stack is an open stack configuration or distribution, I would call it. And of course, at some point nowadays, you just have to offer Kubernetes um, as part of your, you know, whatever stack you, you, you are doing. And uh, we are hoping to bring Gardner to this stack, but of course, uh, um, you know, the best solution wins. Uh, it's not set yet, but we are involved in that too. And we are hoping to leverage Gardner to Bring as much Kubernetes to a um, you know European or independent sovereign um, cloud world of the future. Okay, enough about us. Um, what we really want to talk about is the Gardner, uh, the Hetzner Cloud extension for Gardner. I provided you with the link here um, to our repository. At some point, maybe we we didn't really talk about that uh, before. Um, we might move that, this repository to the Gardner organization, but right now we are working on it independently for the most part. So it's living in our GitHub organization and you are happy to just uh, visit the link and explore it on your own. And I will explain some more of what we, we did. So I will only go into the motivation and you know show it off parts um, since Tobias really was the a main developer behind it. I started development, but I'm not an experienced Go developer. So once I got to the limits of my um, development uh, knowledge, uh, Tobias joined the project and uh, got it to work completely. So I will now show the demonstration just to prove to you that it's really working. So this is a standalone Gardner installation we, we have for, for just for developing this extension. And we also added the required dashboard components to this. Um, so if you have a completely configured Gardener and activated our extension, you will be able to add an infrastructure secret for Edge Cloud, which is the shorthand for Hetzner Cloud. 
Um, and you enter a token here. You can create those tokens in the Hetzner Cloud console, or I'm sure there's an API call too. Um, you know, create a token and copy that token to the dashboard. I already did this for the demo, and I already um, started two Kubernetes clusters just for the demo. So we are not uh, dependent on the demo really working, but I will still launch another one. And hopefully in a few minutes, we have another Kubernetes cluster running here. Um, Hetzner Cloud has three regions. Um, of, I only have a seat in one region. So we, there are three regions, uh, two in Germany, one in um, Iceland, in Helsinki. Um, yeah, so and each region only has a single zone, which is, you know, currently how it is. Uh, maybe they will add more zones. Uh, I surely hope so. Um, and, you know, I've added all the interesting instance types, starting with four gigabyte of memory. I don't think um, anything smaller is really interesting. And, um, you know, it ends at you know, 48, uh, uh, 84 CPUs and 192 uh, uh, gigabytes of memory. So I do think they offer a fairly large uh, offering of instances. The only thing that supported is Ubuntu which is a limitation we will talk about. And um, the volume size is actually not used for anything. So we are not, uh, it's not possible to attach uh, volumes as your root volume. So ignore that, we might patch it out at some point. Okay, so the other stuff is not specific to um, Hetzner, so I will not show it. Um, okay, so this cluster is now starting and you know how it is. It takes a few minutes. So we will um, look into one of the existing ones um, just to prove to you it's a running cluster. Um, so this is the, the shoot cluster I've logged in, you know, um, with the K3S, uh, K9S tool. And um, I have a running node of the instance type CX21 which is the, again, the four gigabyte one. And of that, um, it's roughly half of it is uh, left for your own um, workload, which I think is really for small stuff. It's uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, okay, so we are seeing the um, CSI component and you know, I don't think there's anything else that's not specific. And when I switch to the um, shoot cluster, uh, the seed cluster, which is also the garden cluster, it's all running. Um, it's also also serving as a seed. We not only see the new one that I just launched, um, but also the other two ones running here. And again, if you look into the cloud controller, you know it's uh, the, the Hetzner cloud controller. Um, it's the upstream uh, version, and I'm sure you can believe me. It's uh, gone. It's all uh, it's all real and not just a fake. Um, what else would be interesting here may, might be the cloud profile and um, I'm sure we, um, we are lacking some uh, larger example in the documentation uh, where you know there are the machine types. I will upload um, a, a better example to the GitHub soon. Um, we have a small uh, um, machine image uh, thing here where we just set an arbitrary uh, uh, date, which is again a limitation we will come to. And this is the public Ubuntu image they are offering. And here you can again see the three regions they have and the different zones where we just reused uh, the structure they currently um, use on their own or the names they use on their own. Okay. So um, back to the slide set, I think. So well, we can see it's um, fairly, fairly far progressed and um, the node should already be starting. You know, um, if you look at UC72 um, and the servers we see here, you know, for a few seconds ago, um, this node was uh, spawned. Okay, now it shows me error. I hope I'm still, uh, it's not an error in Zoom. Um, Okay, and this node is, will be joining fairly soon to the cluster. The, the nodes really are spawning fast. And um, since we are not performing anything um, unusual in the cloud init, um, it 
it's a fairly fast process to for the nodes to join. Okay. So um, yeah, it's uh, still still going on. So I don't think we should wait for it. And just to prove for you, it's really um, working. If you look again in the garden cluster, we are running on. This is again consisted of nodes running on Hetzner, you know, a little, little bit larger instance size, but we are already on uh, working on Hetzner. And I think you agree if you are successfully running as a shoot, um, most of the normal Kubernetes features like volumes or um, load balancing services need to be working. So um, I hope I uh, have proved to you that this is a fully functional um, Kubernetes cluster and we did run the um, Sonoboy certification. I don't know how it's really, um, what's the right word for it, um, framework and have uh, um, it, it did pass all tests there. So I hope this, um, this is enough. Okay, um, back to the presentation. Um, and a bit more about um, what we are going want, want to show us or why we want to show us. Um, as I uh, said, it seems to be working and we are using it for, for a lot of stuff, but we really are ready for more users and ready for more feedback and um, you know more insight to what we are not doing right. And the only way to get there is to talk about it. So this is why we are doing it. Um, so now to the part why we did a Ghana uh, extension in the first place. Um, you know, we could spend our time with anything. It's not uh, this is, it's not a paid extension. We were not paid to do that. Um, we wanted it for ourselves and we wanted to gain the knowledge to know how to write extensions. We wanted just to get involved in the community and, you know, upstream and um, I think a um, Gardner extension is a really good way to start working on Gardner or developing Gardner because the core development, they of course have other um, quality um, requirements or are a lot stricter about getting stuff into, into the, the, the core um, product, which I can completely understand. And with an extension living in our own repository, we really had no, um, yeah, there was no uh, no one to tell us uh, that um, that we are doing it uh, uh, that we have to do it in another way. We could just experiment with it, and um, the SAP team was nice enough to answer all questions we had while developing it. Um, um, but we really co could go at our, at our own pace and learn about it and try out stuff and uh, just you know just do it. And uh, while the Upstream work is, uh, of course, a lot more structured and uh, yeah, a bit more strict. Also, of course, we uh, we are a company, a startup. We are not uh, swim, swimming in money, so we hope this is also good marketing for us as a company. Um, we know how to write extensions, um, and we of of course we can get better at it uh, still. But if you require some extension for Gardner. And I, we would be happy to talk to you and we also would be happy to talk to you about other Gardner stuff um, since we are fairly proficient, I think, uh, uh, setting up and running Gardeners. Okay, enough marketing. Um, so why Hetzner specifically? I think if you are from Germany in the you know cloud world, Hetzner should be a name you, you know about, but worldwide, maybe not. Um, but you know, for the maybe the, this is not a good motivation, but it is a, for us as a small startup, it was a valid motivation. It is just magnitudes cheaper than what I've shown on the right side. This is Azure. I should have put a name on it. So the left side is Hetzner, and the right side is Azure. And you know, your apples to oranges. I'm completely aware of that. But just as a quick comparison, you know, you are. Um, factor five or maybe more um, cheaper running similarly. And I'm sure there are a, a lot of uh, parts where it's not really comparable um, kind of instances. And if you take a bigger one, I think the last 
that really is one to one is the eight uh, eight core one you're talking about 240 um, euros against 30 euros so this is really a factor where yeah price makes a difference for at least for small companies like us um, as I already said, it should be a Hetzner Cloud or Hetzner as you know, Hetzner does uh, is mostly a not cloud company, but they have a cloud um, sub company, I would call it running a cloud and Hetzner is a data center and um, server provider. It is really a company we where I, I personally and um, uh, was uh, really ha having a good time with for many, many years. Um, and beforehand on, on their um, managed, uh, unmanaged root servers and um, recently on their cloud offering. Um, we have contacts to them and you know, uh, in the beginning of uh, this project, we also talked to them if they would be interested in sponsoring the extension. Unfortunately for us, they were not, but we are still um, able to talk to them and um, give them feedback and uh, which is, something that um, I personally value. So the hyperscalers, you know, there are just uh, different ways to work with. And I'm sure we could have found other um, hosting companies in Germany or in Europe that worked, uh, works uh, that are similarly, but we decided on trying out with Hetzner. Hetzner is also big enough to be interesting for, for other um, deployments. It's not like they are running out of capacity every time you now start 10 nodes or whatever. Um, so I think they, they are scaling well and they can scale even more if, uh, if a big cu customer goes to them and uh, talks to them, I'm sure they can um, quickly scale up even more. Another thing that was uh, um, a requirement to even consider them, they have Kubernetes controllers working and supported and they do it themselves. Um, but also interestingly enough, they do not have their own managed Kubernetes service. So there was at least uh, some gap where Hetzner specifically was interesting um, because you know we do not compete at, uh, with, with their own offering, whereas all of the uh, hyperscalers have their own managed Kubernetes and um, you always have then to ask why use Gardner and not what the hyperscaler already is providing which has a lot of good answers, of course. Um, and every, everybody here is um, happy using Gardner instead of a hyperscaler managed Kubernetes. And uh, the next point is that they do, the, the Hetzner Cloud does have all features that is, are required for a complete Kubernetes offering, which are not only, but these are, these are the ones I could think of. They have volumes, they have load balancers, they have private networks, they are, um, Images or their the, the instance process, boot process supports cloud in it. And um, we did work with other, other clouds that were lacking some or one or at least one of the, those uh, things. And then it's a deal breaker. If you don't have cloud in it, you know, Gardner is not uh, ready to spawn anything without cloud in it. If you don't have volumes, that's really not a useful Kubernetes service uh, until, um, unless you um, bring your own volume um, stuff. So I think that it's a good match to start with. Um, a, a bit more of the motivation part is we are, it's not set in stone, but we think we can offer a public multi-cloud managed Kubernetes as a service and um, I'm sure we will find a lot more buzzwords, buzzwords to add here. And of course, we want to use Gardner for that. And by including a really cheap, or I better call it economically, cloud offering like, like Hetzner Cloud, yeah, it just uh, sounds a, a bit better to start, you know, with five euro 83 and uh, instead of, you know, 30 minimum at, uh, for example, Azure. And, um, you know, for semi-public offering, we want to have some free or at least trial um, tier. And for those control planes, um, of course, it will be, you know, like Gardner is you bring your own API key for your favorite cloud. 
um, but the control planes are is, is what what we need to host somewhere, and by doing it economically, for example, on Hetzner Cloud, that this is not set in stone. Um, we can run your control plane even if your nodes are, for example, on Azure or AWS. Your control plane is run economically. I will call it on on for example Hetzner Cloud, and. You know, in, if you think about running hundreds of free control planes somewhere, um, and uh, I might go back, you know, if you take, uh, you know, 832 um, factor, about factor 10, not exactly, doing it 10 times cheaper than um, on another cloud is really, yeah, it enables us to do it, to even think about such a tier. Um, it would not be really possible. We are not made of money, we do not have, have um, uh, um, venture capital or anything else to burn. So um, do it, doing it um, economically is really important for us. So by including a cheaper cloud in our stack, um, we really can do such a thing. Okay, so that is um, the why and I'm also going to talk about uh, what's not so great about Hetzner or our Hetzner extension for a few minutes and um, for Tobias explains a bit more. One of the ugly things is that all instances have public IPs. So if I switch back um, to the Hetzner Cloud console, it's they all have their, their public IP. And at the moment, you can't disable that. Um, we talked to Hetzner and they said it's on the roadmap to, you know, just for cost um, or IP saving measurements, they will um, in the future allow disabling those public IPs. Um, and if it takes too long until they do that, we will look into the firewall feature and, you know, just block off all external traffic. Um, that's certainly possible. The load balancing service behaves a bit differently, at least by default, they all spawn with an IPv6 and internal IP. And if you have done anything with Gardner that, and uh, um, you know that IPv6 is uh, the DNS um, component does not understand IPv6 at, at the moment. Um, and it's also, it does understand the internal IP, but it does not make sense to put an internal IP in the uh, DNS name. So we had to disable that and we would wish we could re-enable uh, each of those features uh, for individual shoots or individual load balancers. But since we disabled it in the cloud controller, it's not uh, currently possible. So we are looking into that. Another ugly bit is the load balancers um, are of a set um, size um, and to scale them up, you need to set annotations. It would be much better if they would just auto scale to a bigger load balancing instance. Um, and the limits for the load balancers are just in the number of co current um, connections, number of backend services and stuff like this. Um, yeah, so if you run out of services for your load balancer, you need to set an annotation which I don't think is really how it should be. Um, a really ugly thing is the image uh, support. You cannot upload your own images. So we are stuck with the public images that Hetzner, um, I hope, regularly patches and uploads again, but we have no control over our OS updates in the moment. Um, we are also looking into um, ways how to do it, and uh, but there really is uh, not a good solution at the moment. And of course, always required is more and better documentation. So um, I have linked to the GitHub repository, but I'm sure you would at the moment not have the, the best time of your life to just start with that. So um, we are going to improve on that, of course. And automated testing is something we also um, are not doing right now. Um, we have again talked uh, with Hetzner and they will provide us with a free project to run automated testing. And um, so um, we, we are in the works of setting all that up. And at some point we will um, be able to 
um, have all the nice um, CI badges shown in the GitHub repository. Okay, I think that's for me. Yeah, that's the end of my slide set. So um, now I um, will um, stop sharing and Tobias will talk a bit more of the development side of this extension. So if we look again, we now have three and it's all green. And I, I think it takes about 10 minutes um, from start to finish until everything is there. Yeah, so it did really work. So over to you, Tobias. So my name is Tobias Wolf. I'm situated in Germany, developing software since uh, at least 2003 and uh, was involved uh, partly, uh, okay, also mainly in the development of the Hudson Cloud uh, machine controller manager provider and also in the Gardner extension. Um, I have three points on my agenda. The introduction uh, just already uh, completed. Uh, lessons learned so far and enhancement proposals. Uh, the lessons learned are, uh, First of all, without any bashing on Wolf that I don't like Go, um, let me uh, at least say some words about that one. Uh, it's object-oriented programming gone every, uh, at least for me, uh, because tracts uh, may contain callable methods that come from different files within the same directory. So you never know what you get uh, before you read the whole code uh, in one directory at least to learn uh, what is all uh, on the structure um, or part of the structure you are uh, somehow handling uh, because it was returned by a method or whatever. Um, there's no exceptions handling, no proper error handling so far. Well, of course there is panic, but panic to the rescue. Uh, it's, it's somehow complicated. And absolute imports are expected, uh, but uh, for most projects, also uh, this one, there is a sub-level directory like a package. And uh, with that, uh, so you, uh, you always have some, some builder scripts that copies over or create some temporary directories and these things. And well, it's, it's, there are better, better solutions available, but uh, still, uh, if you are uh, starting to develop, or, uh, develop in Go, uh, it might look very strange for, for you at first, but once you go and uh, you go, yeah, uh, once you go and uh, uh, start doing stuff, uh, of course, you can still come into the special utilities you need uh, to accept uh, and uh, at the end of the day, you still get stuff uh, done, of course, which is, of course, uh, not bad. So um, besides this ranting, um, remind to have the look uh, to have to look at the Go mod uh, always for Gardener or the Machine Controller Manager, because if you miss it, um, CK resources uh, breaks your compiling uh, most of the time because the newer versions are not compatible with ones that are expected or used in Gardener, which is part of your project. And so everything uh, just has issues finding even some uh, packages sometimes and other uh, times it uh, says that, of course, functions uh, have a different uh, structure, need different parameters and these kind of things. So if you start a new project, have a look at the GoMod there, uh, have a look at the uh, pinned uh, GoMod versions of the uh, underlying uh, Gardener or Machine Controller Manager package, and then everything should work. Uh, but if you start, which is part a topic of this uh, session a bit, uh, then you uh, have the issue that you don't know that. So, when, if you uh, don't find anything in the documentation, what uh, is for, what is required for the extension or what is required for the machine controller manager, there's at least one, one answer that I was able to find and that's in the code. Uh, especially if you don't know what is expected from a method uh, like reconcealing, um, then the last resource that helped for me was to look at the act controller actuator or the type definition files where the um, uh, API documentation 
at least uh, as an overall view describes uh, very well uh, what is expected uh, while uh, this method is called. And so you have at least a starting point where you can uh, then uh, have a look, for example, at other um, extensions, uh, what should be done. Um, still, that's something I will come back uh, soon. And uh, the controller registration contains uh, the uh, relevant Helm shards uh, from the shard subdirectory of an extension. Um, at the Hetz uh, HCloud uh, extension provider, we uh, use uh, the upload feature of GitHub to uh, pin the controller registration to each release, which uh, is something I personally at least uh, um, find better than putting it into the example subdirectory where most of the uh, current uh, extensions uh, puts this file under. Um, maybe as a side note, that's the file that is needed to uh, install the extension uh, on a new um, Gardner installation. Um, I hope that I have said that the right way. And um, then you are ready to go. And for the uh, controller you define, uh, it is get, it's not uh, activated automatically by magic or uh, some plug loading mechanism, but you need to include them in an active code path. And uh, some kind of magic is involved in the init function, for example, for type registration. So that's uh, something especially for uh, Go again. Um, that's the way it's handled, that uh, an init uh, function is only called once. And of course, if you don't know that, again, um, you will wonder why does it not work at all, or if it works, uh, why it works, because it's not really clear, this init function is never called, and these kind of things. So have a look at uh, the Go language. Um, if you are in, in trouble uh, with these kind of things, because uh, the, these are some uh, points you may uh, fall over uh, when starting development. And uh, it might be helpful um, to document them uh, at some point in time. Um, so I have two enhancement proposals prepared. Um, one is that uh, the that it would be helpful to have a separation between the Gardner extensions package code, as well as machine controller manager specific one from the uh, Gardner release uh, itself. Um, motivation behind it is that uh, for while I was developing the uh, Hetzner Cloud uh, extension, at least once I had a breaking code change uh, without the major version number reflecting this uh, code change uh, because it was something related to the control plane value provider uh, Go files where uh, K um, Kubernetes resources or resource definitions changed somehow. So of course it would be better for from a development uh, point of view if you uh, do not have to re-vendor your own uh, project uh, so often, uh, or if you need to, that you already see uh, based on the version extent, um, increase, uh, which kind of uh, code change uh, you may face after that with uh, calling uh, make build. Um, so that's something that uh, would be interesting, at least from my point of view. And the next one is uh, a repository of best practices in developing extensions and the machine controller manager providers. Um, because of course you can also copy existing ones, uh, Azure, uh, AWS, uh, the Hetzner Cloud one maybe. Um, but it would also not that uh, if you uh, have a list uh, what is expected, what is the um, best solution for some uh, issues you may face. And also for that that I uh, said earlier, uh, with the uh, a go in it code, or maybe that's too low, uh, low level, um, that the steps involved in getting started is not uh, that deep, or the learning curve is uh, not uh, that deep. 
than it was at least for me. Well, that's the points uh, I had so far. And uh, I'm not sure if we can have a short discussion or if there's a need for discussion or if it's, it's the end of the, uh, at the end of the session. Yeah, so we would be happy to answer any question about the extension and mm -hmm. or the points you made about the development process. And um, yeah. Yeah, first, thank you both for the presentation. I think it was very interesting. And uh, usually in the end of the, the meeting, we also um, open up for Q&A. So if someone puts stuff in the chat, um, it is, um, yeah, we just can go through it. I just checked so far, there are no messages. So uh, then I would ask the, the, the participants to directly unmute and uh, if they have questions to bring them up here or contact you after the meeting. Okay, I think nobody is trying to ask anything. So thank you for listening to us and- um, Do you hear me? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I just wanted to say, yeah, great. Looks like a very great extension. And um, it's, it's great that you were able to push through to, to overcome the initial hurdles. And they are definitely steep, I would say. Um, and yeah, it's definitely also a very valid point that there must be more um, documentation, especially also for developers, not only for, for end users, how you would like use a shoot or something like that, but also how you develop an extension, for instance. Um, and I think we can talk about that and um, maybe we can open a new repository, something like that. To start that, I think there were thoughts about doing that since a while, um, just hasn't been prioritized properly, I would say. Yeah, exactly. So one of the first uh, meetings we had with the SAP team when, uh, when we start, uh, just getting started um, was that our deliverable um, or our contribution of this entire process would be a documentation like that. but. Once we got into the weeds of really writing the extension, <laughs> we kind of lost track of uh, writing down how to do it because uh, we were <laughs> just overwhelmed with the process itself. So we think for maybe for the next one, we are um, planning on doing another provider extension sooner or later. Um, it might be easier for us now to now we now know enough to do it in a more structured way maybe and can probably also help with the documentation of a more general how to write an extension um, part. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Hi, oh. it always takes a little bit of time. Okay. Hi, Lothar, Sorry. this is Vasen. Uh, yeah. and hi. Hi, 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 Tobias, thanks for the presentation. Great. I, I would be interested, you know, you mentioned that you wanted to offer um, yeah, um, Kubernetes as a service uh, via Hetzner um, Cloud, also on top of um, different cloud providers, like uh, the, the hyperscalers. I mean, is, is there, do you, is that in the context of Gaia X or can, can you elaborate a little bit more about your idea there? So um, we have it running already, <clears throat> so, it's configured, you know, I, I add my, for example, Azure credentials and spawn a cluster and the control plane will run on Hetzner. And of course my own worker nodes will run in Azure. And you know, we did not go any uh, further with this uh, so far, but it's, we, we proved the point. And what it's also great for is um, to add new cloud profiles is really easy and quick because you don't need a seed in the um, target cloud. We just run mm -hmm. it um, like this. Um, and the, the, there's no direct via X context or anything there. Okay. Um, it's just something that we think is, um, you know, kind of missing in the market or we, we see an opportunity to offer a service like this. And especially since Hetzner does not offer a managed Kubernetes service, we think at least people that are interested in managed Kubernetes on Hetzner cloud um, might go to us. And of course we, um, you know, we will separate uh, premium tiers and users uh, at, okay. at some point. Um, and the work we are doing in the GaiaX or more specifically in the sovereign cloud stack um, is so far 
unfortunately just a Gardner demonstration. So mm -hmm. then, um, there is no decision to do the Kubernetes layer with Gardner um, at the moment. Um, in my view, it's the perfect match. You know, run uh, as I said, Southern CloudStack is OpenStack really under the hood, um, and Gardner plus OpenStack is really a good combination in my experience. And of course, everybody um, that would be interested in running on, um, you know, like their own OpenStack cloud plus Gardner could, of course, also extend to a multi cloud uh, offering. Um, and just offer all of the mm -hmm. other um, clouds. And at that point, they might also be interested in running, you know, uh, like this hybrid mode where the control plane is um, in your own, you know, in this case, it would be OpenStack, and, but you allow your users yeah. to um, also be present on the hyperscalers. Um, I think that's an interesting setup at least um, because, yeah, you know, you know um, the control plane does contain critical data. Um, yeah, we will see where this takes us. Okay, thank you. And and you also have in, in that example setup one of this, I mean, I know that you're coming from the sovereign cloud setup OpenStack. You also got an OpenStack in, in environment. Exactly, in yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, yeah. We have multi, many OpenStack clouds, in yeah. fact. So the most, for the most clouds are OpenStack that we have. And then we yeah, trust to have them added to hyperscalers. Um, you know, I'm personally not that interested in the hyperscaling uh, world, so it's, you know, it's done and yeah. dusted. Um, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure it's really well tested and stuff like this. Um, but the OpenStack providers are more, you know, it's a bit more interesting and more local and more, you know, people that you talk to um, and European stuff like this. So okay. um, we offer many OpenStack clouds in our current um, installation and just uh, one instance of the hyperscalers each. Yeah, nice, nice to hear. At least that OpenStack extension comes out of the box with Gardner. And yeah, uh, it's good to hear that that works on various different versions. Um, I have, uh, if I may, one more question about the work. Um, kind of, it's, it's good with the Hetzner extension, you had a goal in mind, you, you figured out things, um, the, the pre-requirements were set. How long, I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, months, I mean, how long was the, yeah, did it take you to get into, um, yeah, understanding what needs to be done in coding and then the actual coding work itself? I think I might, it might be intermixed, but maybe can you elaborate a little bit on that? And um, so for me, it's really, really hard to tell because it was never of like a full-time project it's always mm -hmm. was kind of a side gig um so it's, I, I think it's really hard to quantify um tobias do you have any idea how much manpower we required or we would require for another one maybe well for basic things to get started um of course you need to you need to have the understanding of gardener uh without it um then it may take even a month or a longer you don't know um, but uh, if you have the basic understanding then the functionality of the machine controller manager um, should all um, most of the time be done within uh, so a maximum yeah. of five to ten days maybe uh, but also if you do other things and if you do it right from the beginning so this you the tests involved uh, at least and uh, for the rest, of course, it, 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 it uh, depends. Um, for example, for Hetzner Cloud, uh, still, we don't have the uh, floating pool IPs uh, available. Uh, we simulated uh, at least that we uh, create a public IP if requested. But of course, we learned that we have a public IP anyway, uh, besides that definition of the floating pool or not. Um, but still, uh, the work you need to do in the uh, controllers of the extensions, uh, for example, in that case, uh, the infrastructure controller, uh, are a way too different to have some mm. default numbers. Um, I think for uh, it, at least for this extension, uh, one of the hard parts was we, we were learning Gardner in parallel to an extension uh, development. So. 
um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we would be much faster now. And um, for the most part, we are already looking into other providers. And most of the time, we just hit some dead end where some feature is missing because, you know, they're all bespoke APIs and mm -hmm. everybody tries to do something um, different. And for historic reasons, they don't have cloud, uh, cloud in it or don't have uh, load balancing. Something is always uh, problematic there. And so, yeah, um, I'm sure it won't be that easy actually to find a uh, find a good provider to support for um, where it's just working out of the box. Hmm. Yeah, and maybe something uh, also from my side, uh, the uh, API documentation from the provider is also very important uh, because you need to, that's the uh, main part of the start of the development, you need to study the API documentation. And if it's well, uh, there are many examples, if there are, uh, If they work out of the box, uh, then of course you get a much uh, a faster forward than if you need to do everything from scratch uh, your own, on your own. I would, I would actually say we, we got luck, lucky by selecting Hetzner and not something different because you know I listed the requirements that uh, I could think of and it kind of was luck that nothing was missing in the end. It would have been easy to yeah, find not, out. Not every provider has. Yeah all of these features yeah, yeah. so um yeah nice thank you very much you're welcome okay so i'm hanging out in the gardener slack all the time um if you need something you can ping me there or via our website and um, if i would share my slides again or on the slide set there will be contact information and we will um, upload the slide set of course so thank you again. Okay, thank you. I will follow up for the recording with you and uh, distribute the slides. Thanks again, everyone, and uh, speak to you next time.